Welcome to section six of Microbiology Fundamentals. In this section, we will discuss viral structures. Let's get started. To start off our discussion, let's clarify important features about envelopes and capsids. The envelope is simply a lipid bilayer that surrounds the capsid. This is very similar to the phospholipid bilayer of eukaryotic cells. Now, not all viruses have envelopes. The ones that lack an envelope are termed naked viruses. Now let's turn our attention to capsids. These are present in all viruses and they are made of proteins and they surround the nucleic acids. They come in two varieties, or two configurations, an icosahedral configuration or a helical configuration. This figure shows a diagram of enveloped viruses. By looking at the left image, we can see that lipid bilayer, which is labeled. You can see that on the other side as well. Within that is the capsid. Looking back at the left image, we can see that icosahedral capsid. Within that are the nucleic acids. And if you turn your attention to the right image, you can see that the capsid in that virus is helical. When you look at that lipid bilayer, notice there are surface proteins or viral particles. These are necessary for the virus to attach to host cells in order to infect them because it allows entry into the cell. As mentioned before, some viruses don't have an envelope, so they don't have that lipid bilayer. And these are termed naked viruses. And for naked viruses, the capsid is always in an icosahedral configuration. In other words, naked viruses don't have a helical configuration. As you can see here, there are proteins or viral particles embedded within the capsid. These are necessary for the naked virus to attach to host cells in order to infect them. Just as the surface proteins on the lipid bilayer of enveloped viruses are important to gain entry into host cells. With that, let's dive into how viruses actually enter cells. This process is a little bit different for enveloped viruses and naked viruses. Let's start with enveloped viruses. There are three steps. First is adsorption, then penetration, and then uncoating. With adsorption, the viral particles that are on the lipid envelope will attach to the host cell. So when you think of the word adsorption, you can just think of the word attach. With penetration, the lipid membranes will fuse and the viral capsid will then enter the cell. And the next step is the capsid just releasing the nucleic acids into the cytoplasm. Now for naked viruses, the process is basically the same, except when it comes to adsorption, the viral particles are on the capsid and those are what attach to the host cell. And then with penetration, the host cell brings in the viral capsid through endocytosis. This is different than that fusion we talked about before. But the next step, uncoating, is exactly the same as before. The capsid just releases those nucleic acids into the cytoplasm. Now here are two images describing viral entry into host cells. The top image demonstrates how naked viruses enter cells, and the bottom image demonstrates how enveloped viruses enter cells. Let's start with the naked viruses. First, a viral particle on the capsid attaches to the cell membrane. This is called adsorption. Next, the host cell will bring the naked virus in through endocytosis and this is called penetration. And lastly, the capsid will release the nucleic acid. This is called uncoating. With enveloped viruses, the process is almost identical, except the viral particle is on the envelope, not directly on the capsid, and this attachment is called adsorption. Then, unlike before, the lipid membranes will fuse, and this is termed penetration, and that capsid is just brought into the cytoplasm. And just like before, the capsid will release the nucleic acid, and this is called uncoating. Now let's discuss how alcohol and chlorhexidine disinfect viruses. Just some quick terms for you to be familiar with. Disinfection just means that most pathogens have been inactivated, while sterilization means that all pathogens have been inactivated. We're not going to talk any more about sterilization here because, as you will soon see, alcohol and chlorhexidine merely disinfect. They cannot sterilize. And the reason we're discussing alcohol and chlorhexidine is because they highlight important features of the capsid and the envelope because here's how they work. They destroy lipid membranes. This means that enveloped viruses will lose their lipid envelope. And with that envelope gone, they lose their viral particles, which means they can't attach to cell membranes. So no adsorption, no viral entry, therefore it's not infectious. Now that's a different story with naked viruses. They don't have a lipid membrane to destroy. So when exposed to alcohol or chlorhexidine, their viral particles are intact because they're still on the capsid. So adsorption is intact, and the virus remains infectious. As a side note, all bacteria and fungi have lipid membranes. This means that these disinfectants can wipe out bacteria and fungi very effectively, more so than even viruses. Here's our virus overview figure showing all the viruses you need to know for step one. Notice all the enveloped viruses. These enveloped viruses will lose their infectivity when exposed to alcohol or chlorhexidine because they lose their envelopes. Now look at all those naked viruses. When exposed to alcohol, these maintain their capsid and can still be infectious, because they have those viral particles to allow for adsorption. This means that things like alcoholic hand sanitizer will reliably kill enveloped viruses, but not naked viruses. For example, norovirus 
and rhinovirus can still be transmitted and infect other people. Now, as a side note, alcohol and chlorhexidine can denature proteins, which means that capsids in naked viruses can be damaged when exposed to those chemicals, because after all, those capsids are made of proteins. However, this mechanism isn't super reliable. In other words, wash your hands with soap and water as much as possible, because many viruses can evade disinfection with hand sanitizers. Another basic viral structure to be familiar with is called a bacteriophage. This simply describes a virus that infects bacteria. These can create the lytic cycle or the lysogenic cycle. These two cycles are described in great detail within the bacterial genetics section. This image shows the basic structure of a bacteriophage. Just like the naked virus we described before, this has an icosahedral capsid. And within that capsid is genetic material. And in addition to that capsid, there's an apparatus that helps the virus infect bacteria. There's a core, a collar, a base plate, spikes, and this helical sheath, a part of the core. This apparatus isn't super important for you to memorize. Just know that the bacteriophage has a unique structure to allow it to inject its DNA into bacteria. Now let's do a question to apply what you've learned so far. A research study is evaluating the efficacy of disinfection using chlorhexidine. Every time a patient is discharged, pathogens present on counter surfaces are assessed and listed. Chlorhexidine is then used to wipe down the surface. Following disinfection, the researchers find that all of the bacteria are killed and most of the viruses are inactivated. However, some of the viruses remain viable after this procedure. The surviving viruses must possess which of the following? A. A capsid protein for adsorption. B. A bilayer made of phospholipids. C. A double-stranded genome. Or D. A single-stranded genome. Hopefully from the question stem you noticed that chlorhexidine was used and it killed all the bacteria present, and most of the viruses. However, some of the viruses persisted. To get this question correct, you need to know the mechanism of action of chlorhexidine, which, as we discussed before, works by destroying lipid membranes. Now, what type of viruses could survive destruction of lipid membranes? Well, the ones that never had them, or needed them to begin with. In other words, naked viruses. So those viruses that remain viable are likely naked viruses. So which of the following must be possessed by these naked viruses? That would be choice A, a capsid protein for adsorption. Recall that viral particles on the capsid of naked viruses interact with cell membranes, allowing them to enter the cell through endocytosis. Now choice B is wrong because a bilayer made of phospholipids describes an envelope, and naked viruses don't have those, which is what makes them naked. And choice C is wrong because naked viruses can have double-stranded genomes or single-stranded genomes. The genome is irrelevant, and for that same reason, choice D is wrong. So again, only naked viruses should survive disinfection with chlorhexidine, which have capsid proteins allowing adsorption. So A is the correct answer. And that's all you need to know about virus structures.